Everyone get out! Hello tankers and tankettes and welcome to a What's Tank video. I do these occasionally and they're intended to look at various different aspects of the game. They're not really the same as my review videos. They're Ten, they're, they're intended to give more of a broad overview, not just of tanks, but of other things. I've done ones on things like um, uh, auto-loading tanks. I've done one on things you can buy with uh, actual money and gold. I've done ones on the different tank classes. And this is kind of related to the, the video that I have already done looking at heavy tanks. And uh, in that, I went through the different national tech trees. I looked at the kind of the broad characteristics of those heavy tank lines. I'm going to be a bit more specific today. I'm going to look specifically at the tier 5 heavies and you'll notice there I've got some premium tier 5s in as well. This is mostly looking at the regular tier 5s but I'm going to give the premiums a brief mention. So I will introduce you to the various heavy tanks and I will take a quick look at the heavies that I've got and I've got all of the heavies that are available apart from the T14 which is the American tier 5 premium heavy. Tier 5 is interesting I think it's the first kind of in terms of heavies anyway it's the first tier where you get the the proper heavies there are two tier 4 heavies there's the French Char B1 and there is actually a German premium version of that which was in the game before the French line came along that's at tier 4 and that's got pretty decent armor nah, not very good gun for tier 4 there's also on the German line the Der Bruchwagen, not very good armor, not very good mobility. It's just not terribly good at all. Uh, I, th I think the gun's not especially good either. I haven't played it myself, but they're kind of in terms of tier four. You know, there's other stuff around that's more that has better armors, that has uh, better guns. So they're they're heavies, but. The only thing that really marks them as heavies at tier 4 is they get better hit points marginally than uh, other tier 4s. There are much better tier 4s around than the, the heavies. So, in my mind, at any rate, tier 5 is where the proper heavies start. And I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to each one. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to have some uh, footage in the background where I go and what I'll do is I'll go into a little bit more detail and um, maybe have a few more facts and figures. And at the end, I will. Uh, have a summary and say which ones I think are best. But having said that, I think one nice feature of the tier 5 heavies is that they all have something. There's something good about each of them. There's maybe you can point to... Well, I can point to the VK and say maybe that's the weakest, but I can't really point to the, any of the others and say, well, that's the strongest, because I don't actually think there is a strongest tier 5 heavy. There are some that are better at some things than others, there are some that are better all-rounders than others, but they've each got something going for them, they've each got some good aspect, even this thing. So we'll start off with, uh, I'll just, like I said, I'll give you a brief introduction and then we'll jump into um, a more in-depth look at each one. So we've got the KV-1 which is Russian tier 5, it's pretty well known, I think it's one that a lot of people go for as their first tier 5 heavy, and it's a pretty decent all-rounder, it's got a bit of everything, it's quite nice. The American uh, tier 5 heavy, which is actually called the T1 heavy tank, is, uh, again, I think it's a very good all-rounder, I think it's a pretty nice machine. The armor's not quite as good as the KV-1, the, uh, the gun is actually... Um, probably the nicest thing about this, although the, the frontal armour is still fairly decent on this thing. Um, it's also marked by probably having the best mobility of any of the tier 5s, mainly to the thanks to the fact that it has almost a thousand horsepower engine at tier 5, which is pretty unique. The Churchill 1 is fairly slow, not terribly well armoured, but it's got a very nice gun. It, it, it's more of a sit back and hit them from a distance tank although you know in the right hands it can be very capable in a kind of more of a close-up match but it's not quite as capable as being up in people's faces as the kv1 and the t1 heavy the vk is actually a lot like the churchill and the unique feature of the vk i, I mean you'll see there the armor's not terribly good and the uh, the mobility isn't terribly good the unique feature of the vk is it gets this gun the conish gun and it's pretty damn nice 160 penetration almost you know almost as good as pen as some tier 6 tank destroyers for instance the best pen of any of the tier 5 heavies this is actually a repurposed 
medium tack. This used to be a tier 6 medium, probably one of the least popular tier 6 mediums because there were a couple of German ones, but Wargaming jiggled the line a bit. They introduced the De De Bruchwagen as the tier 4, and then they moved this thing down, made it a heavy, and gave it this gun because it didn't have this gun before. And if it didn't have that gun, it wouldn't be really that good. I mean, the the other guns are actually alright. It also gets the L70, which is a pretty nice gun at tier 5 in of itself but then it gets the Cornish as well so it's very similar in play style to the Churchill one and it's actually not a bad tank at all but principally because of the gun and last but not least we have the BDR G1B which is the French one and it, it's a bit of an odd beast compared to the others it's quite tall it's like the T1 heavy not as big not as heavy um, but not as mobile the main feature of this is it has pretty damn nice alpha damage for tier 5 and in the right hands, in the right circumstances, you can dish out quite a lot of damage because it's 240 damage per shell and it's pretty nice. It's nice in that regard, but it can be maybe not as newcomer friendly as, say, the KV-1. I'll also take a quick look just now at the three uh, premiums I've got. The Excelsior is on the British line. It's not that great it's in theory it's got decent armor um sometimes it will troll your enemies but the fact is you know that it's, it's quite flat uh, in a lot of places the side armor is probably the most troll armor it has the front the front of the turret sides of the turret they're not that great uh, it, it's also got a pretty terrible gun i wouldn't especially recommend it. The T14 is got basically the same gun. Again, I wouldn't particularly recommend that either, but I haven't played it. It's not particularly popular though, and again, this one isn't particularly popular because it it just it doesn't have quite enough of anything to make it really competitive. It's only really good for being aggressive against lower tiers, same tier mediums. The fact that, I mean, yes, it gets limited matchmaking, but it's his tier 6s, and a lot of tier 6s it just can't do anything against. There's the KV-220, which you probably won't see on sale that often. It was actually um, on sale for Christmas 2013, and I think that's the first time Wargaming had sold it since, uh, I can't remember if it was a pre-order tank or a beta tank or something like that but it's been a while since you've been able to get one and then they put it in the gift shop as part of their um, run up to Christmas 2013 so it's unique feature is the fact it's got a very strong hull it actually has a, a 76 mil gun that's better than most of the 76 mil guns that you otherwise get it's got about um, god what is that 10 more penetration if you compare it to the stock you know in theory that's the same gun they're both marked as the 76 mil ZIS-5 but you'll see that actually it's more than 10 extra penetration and the uh, rate, well, the rate of fire is actually slightly slower but it, it, it's the extra pen that saves it from being a, a, a terrible gun. It, it's actually not bad. The hollow armor is pretty troll um, but the, the turret armor is fairly weak in comparison so a lot of people will shoot that. On, on the whole though, not a bad tank. And then we come to my favorite, the Churchill 3. This was uh, much like the French um, the uh, the B1 being on the German tree as a premium. This thing was on the Russian tree as a premium long before there were British tanks in the game. Very fast firing six pounder gun. Um, it's like the regular Churchill counterpart. The armor isn't especially great, but it's sufficient to do what you want to do a lot of the time. You know, the biggest weak point is obviously the fact that it's got this big flat turret face. It's not particularly well armored, but the rate of fire means you can punish people and it's got the unique feature of it has the best crew training coefficient in the game so uh, well, well the crew training multiplier that's the word I'm looking for if you put a premium crew in this thing you will get um, quite a lot of XP considering that it's a tier 5 so as a crew trainer it's also very good but I think it's just fun to play in of itself so we'll now go on to having a more detailed look at these tanks and we'll start off with this thing, the KV-1. So as I mentioned, I think the KV-1 is pretty much the best all-rounder. It's got a bit of everything. Doesn't mean it's easy mode by any means because 
like any tank, it's got its weak spots. The armor is uh, good enough so long as people don't know where to hit you, but the moment they do, then you can take quite a lot of damage quite easily. But it's quite a forgiving tank, and the firepower is um, its enough. The armor is enough, the mobility is enough. It's kind of, like I said, it's got a bit of everything. I'll actually talk a little about the firepower and then the rest of the tank. It's interesting in that it gets uh, really three guns that uh, are usable. The stock gun is uh, the 76 mil, like I mentioned. It's not that good. 86 pen on a tier 5. It's a bit lackluster. The 57 mm is very fast firing, much like the Churchill 36 pounder. In fact, it has the same... Uh, uh, diameter. It's the same um, ammo, it's the same... Uh, uh, the 57mm guns is what I'm trying to oh so eloquently say. It's very fast firing, the penetration is reasonable, it's the most accurate gun that the tank gets, and it's actually it's um, very nearly one of the most accurate guns that the Soviet tanks get in general. I think there's one or two that are .33, but this one's 0.34, it's pretty nice, it's very fast firing, it's good for hitting weak spots over and over. You also get the 122mm howitzer, which is fairly derpy, it's um, it, it's a derp gun, what, what's more to say about it? It does fire heat shells as its premium ammo, it did get a bit of a nerf, but not as much as the 105mm, uh, so it's still got reasonable penetration with its heat shells. Um, but being a howitzer, it's very slow firing. You do see some people use these guns, and if you're in a lightly armoured tank, you know, that's bad news. The one you probably see people most often use is the F-30, which is an 85mm gun. And the stats are 120 average pen and 160 average damage, which is, you know, that's pretty decent. That's, uh, that it is enough for a tier 5 heavy. The most troll thing I would say uh, about the tank armor-wise is probably the turret. The second turret rather than the stock turret, because the stock turret is fairly flat-faced, it's flat sides, it's not especially bouncy. But once you get to the second turret, it can be troll even for higher tier guns. People firing at the side of it will bounce because it's quite well sloped, it's quite well angled. It's just generally all round quite nice and if people are shooting at the turret on a KV-1, they're not that likely to pen. You can pen the turret on the KV-1, but there are much easier places to pen, so hull down is not a bad place to be. The mobility is okay, it'll get around the battlefield at a reasonable speed, it's not particularly fast, but it's also not particularly slow. It's got more in common with the, uh, the IS-4 line that comes up after it than the IS-7 line, because Uniquely, or thus far uniquely, the KV-1 actually, uh, from that you can research three tier 6 heavies, although the KV-2 you can then go to artillery or you can research the T-150 from that. So th there are two heavy lines to go from this, so uh, th there's more, a lot more XP to grind if you're going to elite it, but it's actually not a, a bad tank for doing that. It, it's just quite nice to play all around. And a lot of people do play this as their first tier 5 heavy, as I mentioned, and it's for a good reason. So if you're considering tier 5 heavies, or if just considering heavies generally, this is a decent one to aim for. Next up we'll look at the T1HT, the T1 heavy tank. This is the American one, and it's got a couple of unique features that you don't really see among any, uh, many other tanks. I almost said any other tanks there, but that wouldn't be right. For one thing, it gets two gunners, which is something it shares with the tank that comes after it, the M6. It also shares that feature with the Churchill 1. The Churchill 1 also gets two gunners, which is rather nice. But the reason two gunners is particularly nice is it means if you're getting to the stage where your crew is trained up, you can train up two gunner crew skills at the same time, and gunner crew skills are particularly nice. Some of the nice features, like I mentioned, it's got a really beefy engine for a tier 5. In fact, you don't get a, uh, an engine this good. Uh, the M6 uses the same engine because it's essentially the same hull. The T29 engine is actually a downgrade. And you don't get the same engine again until... I'm actually just checking the line now. Until... it's either tier 9 or tier 10. I mean, this is a really beefy engine. It's nearly a thousand horsepower. A lot of the, the tank lines, you don't get an engine of this power until the very high tiers, tier 9 and tier 10. 
Um, in fact, I'm just looking at the uh, rest of the Americans now. The, it is the best engine that is on the American line, and it's at tier 5 and tier 6. The tier 10 doesn't have that much horsepower, so that's that's pretty good. That means, although it doesn't have a particularly high top speed, it accelerates really well, and it goes up slopes really well. So you'll find yourself getting to places, um, maybe not quite as fast as the mediums, but you'll certainly get ahead of the rest of the heavies quite easily. That's good for taking um, early strategic positions on a map, especially if you're on a hilly map because you can go up those hills a lot easier than your other heavy brethren. The frontal armor is okay, it's not especially fantastic. Uh, it's actually better in terms of value than the uh, the KV-1 gets a, a given value of 75, this gets a given value of 80 something, uh, but the the um, the bulge in front of the tracks, I don't want to call it the lower front plate, but the the strip of armor that um, is kind of flattish across the front of the tracks, that's actually over 100 millimeters, that's really troll. If people shoot there, it pretty much is going to bounce. There are some weak spots, um, the turret armor is actually pretty decent as well, so it's, it's just it's got weak sides, but the front is reasonably bouncy, and that's true for a a lot of the Americans. They're, they're not particularly known for the hull armor, but the T1, uh, the, the armor values at uh, tier 5, especially if you're angling, you can actually bounce a fair bit. But the problem is if you angle too far, that then exposes your side, so you don't really want to be angling as much as you would with the KV-1, for instance. The gun depression is also really nice, and while we're on the subject of the gun generally, it gets um, the M1A1, which is a fairly ubiquitous gun at tier 5, tier 6 for the for the mediums. It's, it's alright, it's pretty reasonable, there's nothing especially exciting about it. It gets more penetration than the uh, KV-1, but it has less damage, but it's very fast firing. It's not terribly accurate, but if you're... Uh, closer ranges and you're able to hit your targets over and over. It's a really nice gun. It can make mincemeat of your enemies very quickly. So that's the main strength of this. It's just kind of an all-rounder. And gun depression, I've mentioned it's good on this. That's another hallmark of the American line is they generally have good to great gun depression. It's not uniform throughout the whole line, but it's something you can come to expect from a lot of the American heavies. Next up is the Churchill one, and this is a bit of a mixed bag. The armor's not very good, and it's actually not very fast either. The Churchill, though, is much more about the gun, the firepower, than anything else. Once you've got the rest of the modules upgraded, the turret armor is not especially good. The top turret is actually weaker than the stock turret, but the stock turret has a very, very limited selection of guns. You get a two-pounder gun with very lackluster penetration, or you can have the 3 inch howitzer, and the 3 inch howitzer is terrible. If you had the 3.7 inch howitzer, actually that might be quite nice, but you don't get that option on the heavy line at all, I don't think. The Churchill one you'll notice actually also has a hull mounted gun, which is also a 3 inch howitzer. That is completely non-functional at the moment, but if and when um, multi-gun support comes in, you'll be able to uh, use that as well as the main gun. It's not going to be very effective though, it's not going to give you a massive increase in firepower. Like I said, the 3 inch house is pretty puny. Puny? Puny. What's good about the guns is, is though the main gun, and there are, there are some okay guns on this, but the two, the, the one that you want to be aiming for while you're grinding is the six pounder, which is relatively fast firing. Um, it, it's the gun you get the Churchill 3 as well. It's got a reasonable amount of penetration. It's not that accurate, but it's accurate enough for hitting weak spots at closer ranges. But what you really want is the 75mm Vickers HV. That is a pretty damn nice gun. And until they put the Conish on a tank at tier 5, it was the best, uh, the, it was the most penetrating of the tier 5 heavy tank guns with 145 pen. 135 average damage as well, it's reasonably fast firing, it's actually uh, quite accurate, which is nice, and that is something that more dictates the playstyle of the Churchill one, because uh, it is more suited with with the armor that it's got because the armor is not particularly bouncy the the hull armor the the very best hull armor is actually a, a single plate on the front of the the hull and you know if you can get people to shoot that one single plate then uh 
Uh, well done, but the rest of the whole armor is pretty easy to penetrate for pretty much everything at tier 5, let alone higher tiers. But that gun means you don't really have to go head to head with enemy tanks, and you really shouldn't be going head to head with enemy tanks. You should be a second line sniper, you should be firing from the back, and the good accuracy means you can actually do that, you can get away with that. It's got um, is it 0.35? It's with 100% crew anyway. It's effectively uh, 0.34 something. Uh, that will increase slightly with uh, with uh, things like vents and brothers in arms. Um, there's also uh, if you put the right crew skills on it, you can because you don't move very fast in this tank. It's actually very good at firing on the move as well. So uh, that can be buffed by crew skills. Like I mentioned, it also gets two gunners, like the T1 Heavy Tank, and that is, I think, unique for the British Heavies. There aren't any others that get two gunners, so it's it's a, an anomaly in that regard, but it's quite nice to have it when you're at Tier 5. The tank line that comes after it is it's basically two more Churchills. Well, there's the Churchill 7, which is pretty weak for its tier. The Black Prince, which is a lot better, but it's still a fairly idiosyncratic, hard-to-play vehicle. It's quite like the Churchill one in playstyle, though. The armor is a lot better by the time you get to the Black Prince. And then you get the Carnarvon, which is a bit of a step change and is more in line with the uh, tier 9 and 10 heavies, the Conqueror and the FV. So on the whole, I quite like the British tank line. They're, they're characterised by these kind of fast-firing, accurate guns, though. They're not really alpha damage machines, and they're not really amazingly armoured. They're more second-line support tanks, and some, in some cases you can be more aggressive with them. But the, the Churchill one is uh, its just a nice machine, generally, if you can stand the slow pace. It's not a brawler like the KV-1, but it's still pretty damn good. Now we come to the VK 3001H. Like I said, this used to be a medium tank. You had, at, at tier 4, you had, um, well, there was no heavy. You had tier 5 mediums, and the Ger German tree used to be one that didn't have any tier 5 heavies at all, and like I said, it was all rejigged. So what they did with tier 5 was they moved this down from being a tier 6, and they actually then also made the VK3601H, which was also a medium. They made that a heavy as well, but that got left at tier 6. So there's now uh, a, basically a Henschel line going from the 3001H up to, uh, well, definitely the Tiger 2. I'm not sure about the E75 and the E100. I don't know my history well enough to um, say they were Henschel designs, but I can't remember that they might have been. I don't know enough about the history of tanks to actually get into the nitty-gritty detail of, you know, actual history. But the 3001H, it's it's not really a heavy in the same sense as um, most of the other heavies. It's Like I said, it's a lot more like the Churchill, and that is principally because of it, this amazing gun it gets. It gets the Conish gun. It is um, pretty damn nice. Now, the, um, the stock configuration, you know... You're never going to get that much faster than you do when you're um, elited. Um, that, the other way around, I meant the elite configuration, you're not going to be... Uh, well, you kind of know what I mean. It, it's not a fast tank, it's not a well-armoured tank, it's not a tank that you want to be at the front with because the armour is, is not good on this at all. Most of the frontal armour is uh, 50. The only strong armour it gets really it tends to be on the turret. The mantle itself... I think the best you can squeeze out the mantlet is about 120. There's a little bit of 120 millimeter armor to the sides of the mantlet, but on the whole, if you get hit, it will go through. There's no point angling with this thing. What you do have to do is you have to sit at the back and you have to use that amazing gun because, like I said, it's the Conish gun and it's even more accurate than the Churchill. It gets more pen than the Churchill. It has the same damage though. Um, the rate of fire is also fairly decent. Uh, it, it's not going to pump out the fire like a T1 Heavy will, but it's still okay. It, it's, if anything, you have to be further back than the Churchill one, because this can stand even less punishment. But with that gun, you can get away with it. It's, um, it's just a really, really nice gun for a Tier 5, and it's, it's one of the more unbalanced Tier 5s in that a lot of them have got at least some armor for surviving... Uh, contact with, say, same tier mediums, but this doesn't. A couple of same tier mediums will t make mincemeat of this, so you really 
it, it's maybe more team dependent than the rest, but it's still not a bad tank. In fact, the the gun on it actually makes it quite a nice tank to play if you've got patience for that kind of play style. It um, I'm trying to find the view range here. The view range is let's see. I'm looking at the the thingy, the the tank inspector while I'm I'm doing all this section. It's in here somewhere. 360. There we go. The view range is actually fairly decent for a tier five heavy. A lot of the tier five heavies don't get particularly good view range. This is sort of an exception. For this, because of the nature of it, I would actually recommend something like coated optics or binoculars. A gun laying drive is obviously very useful. Uh, gun rammer is also very useful because it's not high alpha shells. You kind of want to em emphasize the rate of fire. But I would say for that third slot, you definitely want to emphasize the view range because that is going to really help you. 360 view range is pretty good for a tier 5. So it, it's, it's not going to be to everyone's taste. If you don't like the Churchill, you're probably not going to like this. But if you can get along with that, if you can use its strength, it's actually a pretty nice machine. And last but not least, we come to the BDR G1B, the French Tier 5 Heavy. This kind of sets the tone for the French Heavies in that it's all about the gun and the rest of the tank is not that good. It's, it's reasonably mobile, the armour won't bounce much, it's not terrifically well armoured. The upper front plate, um, the... It's kind of like the upper front plate is is divided into two parts. The lower front plate is um, is actually it's not that bad. It's not like people are gonna have to be specifically aiming at weak spots. It's it's more that it's armor where you will occasionally get lucky bounces, but a lot of the time stuff will go through. Part of that is because it is. I mean, if you look at it, it's this big high-sided tank. It's like the T1 heavy tank in that way. The the side armor is not good. And if someone comes at you from the side, you know, they are going to pen. You'll get occasional bounces on the frontal armour, but you can't really count on it. The gun mantlet, though, is actually pretty troll. It's equivalent to, um, if you get hit in the right places, it's equivalent to uh, over 150, more like 180 armour with the uh, the spaced armour and then the turret armour behind it. So if somebody hits the gun mantlet, it's fairly troll. The big downside of the turret, the top turret, is that it has this MG cupola on it. People will see that coming before they see you coming over the hill. It also doesn't have a feature of some of the other French heavies, which is good gun depression, but it's not like that is a consistent feature. The tier 6 and the tier 7 get pretty good gun depression. Uh, the auto loaders um, tend to suffer in that regard, although I think the tier 10 gets reasonable gun depression for an auto loader. The gun depression on this isn't amazing, the armour isn't amazing, the mobility is okay, it's sufficient. So why why would you buy this? Well, it's more to do with the fact that it has a pretty damn nice gun. It's like the VK and the Churchill one in that regard, but it's actually a totally different gun. It's more about the alpha damage. It has 240 alpha with a 90mm gun. Now you do pay for that, you have quite a long reload, it's not massively accurate, it's okay. But it's not like it's a. Uh, you're not going to hit stuff as consistently as you will with the the Conish or the Vickers HV. But it's still pretty okay. It's uh, 0.39, I think. Um, but it's it's more the fact that with that alpha damage, with the 240 average alpha, you're going to rack up the damage fairly quickly if you're managing to hit what you're shooting at. And it is very much a peekaboo tank. It's about using cover to pop out shoot somebody and then pull back and because of that it's more of a, a team tank you need your teammates to be fairly reasonable it's a good tank for platooning in that regard because if you know you've got someone to back you up then um, you can dish out the damage and somebody else in a kv1 say can um can actually uh, take it as it were they can they can bounce stuff off their armor and you pop out and blap them in the face so it's it's a difficult one to get to um, really, to get to be able to play effectively, and perhaps more so than some of the other tier five heavies, but it can be really rewarding. And there are a lot of people that use this as their go-to tier five uh, money grinder, just because it has that capacity for actually doing quite a lot of damage. 
the tier five heavies generally actually are considered to be ju good uh, money grinders because it's that kind of sweet spot where they don't cost much to repair and they actually are capable of doing a pretty nice amount of damage and you're also starting to be in matches where there's a lot more hit points floating around so that means more damage to be done if you're top tier in a matilda for instance there's only so much damage you can do because there's only going to be so many hit points in the team but in this thing you are or really any of the tier 5 heavies you know the, the more damage you do you can make a consistent amount of profit and like i say a lot of people use these as their money grinders if they don't have premium tanks or a premium account the BDR is, is kind of favoured in that regard, but the T1 Heavy and the KV-1 are also very good at that. In fact, I think they all are. It's just whatever fits your playstyle, really. Uh, and this isn't going to fit everyone's playstyle, like the Churchill, like the VK, but that doesn't make it bad. That just makes it a little more um, advanced, a little less newcomer friendly than the T1 Heavy and the KV-1. So that's, that's really um, all of the tanks in a little more detail. How I don't quite know how to conclude this because it really is what's going to suit you really depends on your playstyle. Like I've just said, the T1 Heavy and the KV-1 are going to be the most forgiving. The T1 because of its rate of fire and the KV-1 because of its uh, more forgiving armour. But the other tanks all have something going for them. And partly it's what tank lines you're interested in and for that you really need to go and learn about the uh, the tanks that come after them and like I say I have actually done an overview video which tries to cover that that subject but they all have something going for them I think they're all you know I enjoy playing all of them if you're at, at a stage of the game where you are looking for tanks to keep and enjoy there's a lot of good stuff at tier 5 and all of the heavies are, are worth considering but if you're looking specifically for something to do to, to make money in, I think the BDR, the T1 Heavy, maybe the KV-1. Um, and it's really down to uh, what tanks you want to research later and um, maybe what tanks you want to make money with now. So in that regard, there's no real clear choices. It, it's I could repeat what I've said all over again, but... I think there's something for everyone at tier 5 and I think that makes the tier 5 heavies uh, somewhat unique in that regard because there's not that many other tiers and tank classes where you can say oh they're all good because these are all good in their own way. So hopefully all this information has been of some use to you guys and gals. Uh, if you do think so you can hit the like button, you can leave a comment below, um, ask me any specific questions you might have. You can subscribe to my channel, you can go check out my other videos and my Facebook page, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.